Welcome to Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada. Over the course of this episode, we will be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they're working to make their community a better place for everyone. Today, we are honored to sit down in person with Mayor Larry Johansson of the city of Selkirk, Manitoba. But before we dive into our interview, a brief moment to acknowledge the support that keeps our show thriving. We would want to acknowledge all of our new backers to the show. Ryan from Alberta, Mike from Saskatchewan, Tony from Saskatchewan. Thank you for helping us grow the show and bring more exciting content. If you want to join the growing list of supporters, visit crossborderinterviews.ca and pledge your support today for as little as $3 a month. Now, on to the show. Uh, Larry, I want to start with the big question, I, and it's the one I start all my interviews off, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Well, I've been born and bred here in, in Salka, Chris. Um, I've worked at Canada Safeway here. I've never moved from there. I have mid-management, and, and I've had 43 years there. This is my fifth term uh, in office. I've got uh, four kids. I've got seven grandkids. Everybody is in this region. And uh, as I was nearing the end of my career at Canada Safeway, uh, I wanted to give back somehow to to the city, to to Selkirk, and to the area. And and I've always, you know, coached sports. Uh, I I did a charity golf tournament for for ten years. But I wanted to do something a little bit more. And uh, politics was was what I what I picked, what I wanted to do. Uh, and the big reason is, like I say, Selkirk's been good to us. It's been good to me. It's been good to my family. Uh, and I'm happy. Uh, everybody's healthy. Everybody's on first base. And uh, it was time to give back. What was it about the municipal draw? Because you could have chosen many different avenues. You could have chosen provincially, federally, or municipal or school board even. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Five elections ago, you chose municipal. What was the draw to municipal politics and municipal governance that you thought Larry's ability to give back to his community that has been good to him would be best served at that council table? Uh, well, I thought this, and I didn't do, know very much besides <laughs> voting. I didn't know anything about so, politics. So you're the dark horse of the family, that you're the first one to enter elected I was, office. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, the, the closest I have is I have a cousin that was uh, uh, at the ledge, uh, Greg Dewar. And uh, he was in Greg Salinger days. And, uh, he Wait, was, whoa, 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 whoa. You just skipped through the most important. You're related to Greg Dewar? Greg Dewar. Okay. Yes. My, his, my mother was a Dewar. Okay. So his father and my mother were uh, cousins. So, um, but we weren't really, really close. I mean, you know, we're, we're related. And, but your and mom and dad weren't that politically active? Not, no, my dad was strong NDP. He okay. was strong NDP. He was a machinist at the, at the rolling mill. Uh, so he was he was strong NDP. He was in the Ed Schreier, Howard Pauly days. Uh, you know, he would, uh, the bumper stickers on the car, uh, whatnot. So strong labor. Ironically, my uh, my uncle was strong company at the mill at the time. So sometimes the Christmas parties got got a little bit exciting, the family Christmas parties. But that was about my only foray into politics. So when I decided to give back, uh, I thought politics would be the way to go, and I thought the closest uh, to maybe making a difference would be municipal politics. So so that's why I ran, and uh, and I ran for uh, councillor. And, and I, I'll not to have a big head about it, but I did have some people that said, why don't you run for mayor? Uh, but I wanted to do this the right way. I had no inclination to being mayor at the time. I just wanted to give back and, and help develop Selkirk because I'd heard for years uh, at uh, the Safeway store that people were getting a little bit disgruntled. Things aren't moving along. We're, we're not, we're, we're losing census. We're not gaining census. There's nothing being built. Uh, so I thought this was, was the way to do it. And I thought, run for counselor and learn a little bit. Uh, you know, the, the protocol, hopefully make some contacts and, uh, and it was the right way to go, the right way to start. Prior to being elected, had you paid attention to what was going on at the municipal table? Because I, I, when I speak to municipal counselors and mayors, sometimes they'll say, 
I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even know what a meeting was. I didn't know what the proper procedures and bylaws would be for running a meeting. And when I got in, that was the biggest educational experience for me. For someone who was relatively green to the municipal or to the political experience, getting elected, was it as overwhelming as some people have described it or because your background, because you seem like someone who knows the rules and regulations now, but when you first got elected, was it overwhelming or was it easy to no. understand and grasp? No, th that's a great question. Um, well, I wanted to learn. <laughs> I wanted to do it. <clears throat> and I wanted to be a part of something successful. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I've, like I say, I did do double duty for 10 years, for a whole decade. I was still one of the managers at the store and doing the politics. So, But I I love what I'm doing. And, and I love the two, I consider them both careers. Um, you know, I would leave the store and shift gears and, and come to City Hall here. And it, it's completely different but I love them both equally. So that made it easy for me. Um, and like I say, you know, with a little bit of a connection to Broadway uh, in, in Winnipeg, uh, that really helped me along too. Um, so I, I was eager to learn, eager to, to take everything in. Uh, I wanted to do a good job. I wanted to address as much as I could um, and I didn't know how long I would be because, of course, it's not a, you know, you're, you have a four-year and then you get your job evaluation. <laughs> so I didn't know, uh, you know, how, how they would receive me. I did have a, the first time out was at over 80% for, uh, for a vote. So, and I continued like that for the next, uh, next uh, term. So I just didn't know exactly how they would receive me. So I wanted to get as much done as I could. So what was the issue? What was the issue that said to you, this is the election that I need to get in because you, you talk about first base and for that for you I yep. mean everyone has left the house everyone has grown up they're not young uh, kids anymore uh, everyone was healthy everyone was uh, good but you made a decision in 2000 I want to say six correct yes 2006 yeah. you said okay this is the election yeah you could have waited four years to 2010 could you could have done yeah. it in 2000 uh, if I'm doing my math here, 2002, yeah. but you chose 2006. There must have been something else that said, okay, I think there needs to be a little bit of a reflection and redirection of council because what I'm seeing isn't matching up to what I see Selkirk's potential to be. Yeah, and that's exactly right. That last line is exactly why I did it at the time that I did it. Um, I could have waited till I retired from the store, um, but but I just f I felt good about... Um, how I seen things in Selkirk. You know, I could see a vision in Selkirk. Um, I knew we needed more housing. I knew we needed more, um, more industry. Uh, I've always been a strong believer that we could be, we could really be the hub for the interlake. Uh, and we weren't that at that time. You know, we had, we were starting, prior councils were starting. They brought the Walmart and they brought a few other entities uh, down Manitoba Avenue. West, but I really believe that that we weren't there yet, and and I thought with the right team, uh, and with me being on that team, I thought we could really uh, develop, uh, we could move forward, and we could expand. Um, I seen a vision um, in north, east, and west of Selkirk that that was crying out for for a community like ours to to expand and for them to partake in what we were going to do. Uh, I always say they used to bypass us on highways six, seven, eight, and nine and go into the capital city of Winnipeg. And they're not doing that anymore. And that's what makes me feel that we've, we're having success. They're coming here and, and they're seeing that they can do a lot of their services here. And it was not without help from the federal and provincial governments. I give them full, I applaud them immensely for helping us, uh, the team that we have in place uh, when I started here and, and now uh, are strong, a great team and working together, we've really been cohesive. So I want, I want to finish up with yourself before we turn to Selkirk as yeah. a whole here, because that's the main purpose of being on the show. But I want to know from your experience being a councillor for one term and mayor for a few Four. terms yeah. now, um, what's been the biggest wake-up call about municipal governance that you didn't know about going into the job? Because 
there's a lot of people out there right now who are just joining municipal governments and not knowing the background because I, I think in our education system, and I could be wrong here in Manitoba, but in our education system, we don't talk about the levels of jurisdictions and mm -hmm. federal, provincial, and municipal, or even school board. For you, what has been the biggest learning curve about being mayor of the city, mayor in the governance role, mayor in the uh, pro progressive role that you want to move the city forward, but what's been the biggest educational for the town as well, being mayor? Well, I think I, I tried to come in to this job uh, with the same, uh, same timeline that I had at, at Canada Safeway and same environment as treating people with respect and treating everybody the same. Um, so I wanted to, I took that from Safeway to here. And I think part of the success was I did treat people uh, with respect and, and treat everybody the same when I, when I was at the store. And, and I think that was, they could see that in me there. And I think they hoped that I would bring that vision to, to the uh, political realm. And, and I feel we did. Uh, you have to have that separation. That was huge. And, and that was a learning curve of governance and administrative. Uh, that's a big one. I've seen a lot of councils and municipalities that around me that were were were, were you know shattered and and having trouble and you know you would read about them in the local paper uh, or in the free press or wherever and I didn't want that to happen here so I th I think what what I wanted to what I wanted to do was make sure that everybody was respected I think that's a big one and not just at the council table respected in this building, respected in the operations building, respected on transit. When I see somebody that works for us and with us and they're in a truck, I wave, you know. I make sure that they know they're all part of this team. We're all in this together. Treat them all equal. It's, it's a very odd question I'm about to pose, but I think you're ready for it. That's good and fine, but there's a error about politicians. Oh, they're just waving because they want to be elected. Mm -hmm. But it seems like there's sincerity with you. And I mean that with respect because we just drove around to your beautiful community. And I got a sense that there is a sense that you want good pride mm -hmm. in your community. How do you ensure that what you're doing as mayor, as the head of this council, isn't perceived as just being another politician, but in it for the right reason? Oh, that's another great question, Chris. And I think uh, part of it is is listening to the people. I, I mean, I love to talk. You know, we're both talkers. <laughs> yes, I, we I, are. I think we both like to hear ourselves talk. Uh, but I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but but there is times to listen also. And you know, I'm a walker. I walked for like I say, 43 years back and forth to Canada Safeway. I had a couple of places in town and I was able to walk from both of them to work. I walk as much as I can here to City Hall. And not all politicians in all communities would walk all the time. And not all politicians in, in, in a lot of communities want to uh, have that, you know, relationship with the constituents. Uh, you know, and that's, I'm the opposite. I want that interaction. You know, if there's something going on that, you know, is bothering them, I want them to be able to pull the car over while I'm walking or I'm on my bike and, and stop and say, Mayor, could I just talk to you uh, uh, about this issue? That is what I hoped would happen, and it has happened. And I didn't want to, you know, after one term or after two terms, become a politician that wanted to avoid the people. I hope that as time went on, I would be the politician that entwines with the people. And I can go to the pool with my grandkids and, and they can swim and I can be in a lawn chair and the people can come by and they can stop and they can say, oh, I just wanted to ask you about this or, oh, I like what you're doing here or I don't like what you're doing there. And we can have a quick conversation. That's important to me. But doesn't that get tiresome though? Oh. I'm, I'm going to be honest, though, yeah. because the, I'm assuming if you go out with your grandkids or your wife or your kids and you go to the grocery store, you're not going just in and out to go grab a carton of milk. You're going in and out yeah. and talking to 12 other people yeah. <laughs> as well. And it could yeah. be a two hour yeah. uh, trip to go just get milk. Is it hard to be so personable? in a small town because your job is here 24 7 you're yes. not in winnipeg you're not in ottawa doing your job you're in your here. community 
So have the public and personal life of a mayor is quite daunting because no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you're under the microscope. Yep. You are expected to answer questions. You're expected to uh, help people when they want help. You're also expected to make sure that you're following all the bylaws and rules because the moment you don't, they, yep. you will see that on social media. Have you found the balance of being mayor and just being Larry? I think so because I think the kind of... Would uh, your wife agree with that statement? <laughs> I think she would. Uh it, it's one and the same. I'm not. I don't change when really? I come here. No. Uh, I've always been personable. I've always tried to help people out. Um, I've always. I talk a lot, but I've always been a good listener. Also, uh, and my family's involved. You know, my grandkids love the fact uh, that I'm here. You know, and and that means a lot to me. You know, it's it's uh, like a legacy. You know, um, they go to schools and and they'll have you know uh, the prime minister, the premier, uh, and a couple other ones, and me, uh, and they'll ask the kids to to name them all. And you know, my kids will say, "You, Grandpa, you were you were the one that was named the most, or everybody got you." You know, it's those kind of things that uh, it's the human side. So I, I think it's really, really important that uh, you know. We all are in this together, and the success is shared by everybody, whether it's the person that's working in City Hall or operations or on transit or, or wherever, and the person that's on the street and that's living here, the newcomer and the person that's been here all their life. We want everybody to feel the pride and see the success. I want to talk about Selkirk, and I want to ask this big question. And I usually start with another one, but I'm going to start with this one instead because it picks up on something you just said there. How do you make sure, as the head of council, as council, that everyone feels like they're moving ahead? Because you don't have an un unlimited supply of money, and I'm not bursting your bubble there. You have to make big decisions. Yes. And you will get hundreds, two hundred thousands of people asking for everyday issues. Fix my pothole. Fix my sidewalk. Yep. But you have to make the tough choices. And you have to, unfortunately, upset some people by saying, unfortunately, this is not the time that we can do it. Yes. Maybe next year, maybe two years from now. How do you balance and how does the city of Selkirk balance the needs of the many with the needs of the few? And I'm quoting Spock off of Star Trek for anyone who's about to, but it's an important question because municipal government is about helping the many, yep. but also remembering the few. Absolutely. Well, a big part of it is uh, way back when we started, <clears throat> we started an asset management program. And I think every, every municipality, every community should, should be doing that, Chris. Uh, you know, we inventoried every asset that we own um, so now you know we know when a street has to be done we know to the degree when that street has to be done whether it's just a scratch and and put a, a layer of asphalt on it or whether that street has to be dug up uh, that the, the uh, sewer system has to be looked at um, so when people come and they say you know when's my street going to be done I could say well funny you ask you know what we can tell you exactly when that street's going to be done. But sometimes that's not enough, though, right? Because some people will want it now. <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. But but people will will understand that there has to be some rhyme and reason to it. Otherwise, you just you you too many smaller communities, smaller cities, you know, bigger towns. You you get that old boys club, you know. Uh, and, and that's what Selkirk was for a long time, uh, was you, uh, Manitoba Avenue East, which I took you down, which we're kind of rebuilding now. That was our main uh, hub. And uh, we had a long-term mayor at the time and, and a great guy, a good friend of mine and, every, and, and everything. But, you know, if, if council so much has thought about going beyond <laughs> the, that boundary, you know, they got their, their, their wrist slapped. So, you know, that's an old boys club and that's what can hold down a community. So we didn't want that. Uh, so we have to put certain things in place like, like uh, uh, asset management uh, so we can get things done in a timely manner and when they're supposed to be done. Of course, if somebody needs something on a street or, or whatever, you know, they'll, they'll phone uh, citizen support or they'll call us or, or a counselor or, or whatever and we'll do our best to get that done. On our tour today, you, you, you talked about the future a lot, about mm -hmm. how Selkirk has really 
done a good job in planning for the future growth, planning for the future infrastructure needs, planning for the future X, Y, and Z. Why is it important for this council, and particularly right now in 2023, to plan for the future and not just worry about what's going on? Because I find that there's a lot of municipalities across Canada who are just worrying about the here and now with all the uh, external issues that are going on in the world, inflation, uh, with us just getting out of COVID. But it seems in Selkirk, you are future planning and you, you talked about the ROI in our tour, Yes, but it seems like there is a massive push to think about the future of what Selkirk can be and not what Selkirk is now. Am I right in understanding that? Oh, absolutely. No, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think it's, it's we, we, want it, we want Selkirk to be here in the future and we want it to be ready for the future. Uh, we know how climate change is and I mean our guys have, have really, really addressed a lot of the issues that uh, you know, uh, with the electric vehicles, with uh, getting our all our assets down to uh, to net zero, that's our goal, and and we want to do it sooner than later. We're not thinking 2050 here. You know, we're thinking you know 10, 12 years. We want to be closer than we are now, and and we are doing that, and we're doing our best for it. But one of the bigger things too is we're thinking generational. I mean, I want my grandkids. You know, if they decide to stay in this area, uh, that they'll have jobs. That, that they'll be able to stay here, they'll have housing options, that the medical services will be here for them, uh, the commercial businesses that they need will be here for them, and those are really, really important things. So we're putting the infrastructure in place right now that'll handle that. We're working closely, again, with the other two levels of government. And you know, the, the, we have a beautiful hospital which we went by. Uh, it, it's only a few years old, and already uh, the province has put in a $50 million addition onto it because they want this area to be the hub for this region surrounding us and the interlake so i i think about the people coming behind us uh, all the time when we're trying to make decisions when we're applying for grants when we're looking at the next big thing for Selkirk, the next big project and and following our strategic plan the people that come in this chair after i'm gone as long they can fine tune it, but if they follow the bones of the strategic plan, Selkirk's going to be in great shape for decades to come, centuries. It reminds me of a quote from uh, a, a movie, but also a book If you build it, they will come. And it seems like Selkirk has taken that mantra and just ran with it. You're planning and you're building the things that people need so that way people will come. And as we were touring, I saw the developments that were happening. People are building here, people are wanting to come here. What does that tell you as mayor about this community that has made more people want to come and move into your community than, say, in the early 2000s or even the late 1990s? The right team is in place. <clears throat> you know, the administration team that we have right now is, uh, is second to none. Um, the council that we have is, is so cohesive. And that, that's a big part of the success also. I mean, you know, I, I strive as, as the leader of council, and I'm only one of seven, and I have one vote, but as the leader of council, I strive to keep us together. Um, there's not a hill that's big enough that I'm going to die on. You know, we can work things out. Uh, I listen to everybody. Everybody, well, you know, there's some that may, may speak a little more on council than others. Everybody has input. Uh, I mean, when we're in the boardroom and we're discussing projects or we're, we're discussing, you know, where we're going, I make sure that everybody's voice is heard. And I think that's important uh, to keep the council together. How uh, much does respect come into play? Uh, well, I have immense res Is respect, not even for counselor, but for also for the residents. A absolutely. It has to be for the residents. It's tremendous. I mean, we have to respect, respect them. Um, even there's some residents, you know, that um, that they maybe do, don't like the expansion or, or it's too close to their street or, or, or their home, you know, the not in my backyard uh, people. And I respect that. So we work with them. You know, we, we, we hear the concerns. If we're doing a project, you know, we have them come out and we listen to them and then we try to address the concerns. So, so the project isn't, isn't um, it may be massaged, but, but not uh, put on the shelf. Uh, so we do as much as we can with respect to the to the residents and I think the people that are coming here 
and moving here see that. Uh, they may have been coming here from Gimli or Winnipeg Beach or Pine Falls, Power View. Uh, they may have come here to shop for years or, or come to you, uh, get a CT scan at our, our beautiful hospital. And I think if they look around, they see how Selkirk is growing and they may see that they want to be a part of it. That, those are the people that are coming here. What's the challenge that Selkirk has to overcome over the next five years? Because we, we talk about growth, we talk about infrastructure, we talk about how Selkirk is becoming sort of a net zero community, and yes. it's pro it's striving to be that. But what what's the obstacle that Council sees ahead for the next five, ten years that you need to start planning now because you just didn't know about it ten years ago? Is there issues well, that are coming up that you think about? Uh, there's, there's, I wouldn't say so much as obstacles um, or, or severe issues, but, but there's, we do have a lot of on our plate. And I showed you the 350 plus acres that, mm -hmm. that we have to develop. Um, that's, a, that's a good problem to have. You yep. know? It, it, it really is. It's a good problem to have uh, because I'm excited about it. I probably won't see it finished in my time, but I want to see it started in my time. And I want to see the layout, the, the, the footprint started because that's really, really important. That, that's, that's a big piece for us. And, that, and that's a dynasty a legacy that, that this council and, and this administration will will leave behind uh, for the future. So that, that's, uh, that's an issue, but it's a good issue to have. And also industry. I want the people that are, are in grade school now and you know perhaps go on to, to post-secondary school and that, to be able to say, I wanna stay in this community. I wanna stay here, I wanna work here. Um, you know, I wanna be a part of this community because I like the way this community is heading. Uh, and I'm hoping they're saying that and they're thinking that. But um, as, as part of council, that's the kind of things that I want uh, for our future. It, is if you wanna stay here, there's a place for you here. It seems like there's something to do for everyone in this community, and it seems like this this community is thriving. As I was to, we were touring, people were out, people mm -hmm. were doing things, and it was a Thursday morning when I was touring, or Wednesday morning when we were touring. What brings people to Selkirk? What is the tour? What is the draw that you see and that you pitch to people when they say, "Why Selkirk?" What are you telling people about Selkirk that makes them think, "Okay." I might not live in the greater yeah. Winnipeg area. I might be from Russell or from Brandon or Dauphin, but I need to go see Do uh, Selkirk because it seems to be a happening place right now. Absolutely, and, and I always tell people, you know, when you're here, if you have a positive experience in Selkirk, you know, and you leave and you go back to where, where you're living currently, uh, tell 10 people, you know. You may have seen the Selkirk of, uh, you know, even 15, 20 years ago, but you should see Selkirk now. Like, you know, they're, they're developing. We're, we're, we're putting the right services in place. Uh, and, and the medical, I mean, you know, a lot of, ha and with all due respect to some of the smaller communities, but the medical services aren't there. So, uh, you know, if, if you do have an have a issue, a medical issue, and if you're half an hour, even 20 minutes away from quality health care, you know, you might not make it. Uh, but if you're five minutes away, it may make the difference uh, seeing the grandkids again the next day or not. So it's those kind of issues that, that we have to be able to address in Selkirk. And we are doing that. We, we have to have those options so people will look at Selkirk uh, in a light of, this is somewhere where maybe I can, I can live. That brings into the question of the federal and provincial counterparts. Um, you say you have a good working relationship with your MLA, your MP, but in order to make those advancements that you want as mayor, as council, as the city of Selkirk, you need buy-in from the provincial and federal government. Yes. Now, you are making massive strides in the environmental industry here in Selkirk. Are you being noticed by the federal and provincial governments where people are saying, this is the standard that municipalities need to start looking at because Selkirk seems to be 50 years ahead of where everyone should be 10 years from now. <laughs> is my smile getting big, bigger? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, and, and that that is right. And and I'm I wasn't na that naive when I got into politics that I know we can't do this on our own. We we need to help, and uh, so we started making those connections. And and like I said before, I was I was very fortunate to to have uh, a, a kind of an inroad into into the ledge, and, and that that led to other things and, and, and more contacts. And and I'm a person I have. Uh, you know, I'll take a contact, I'll take your card, and I'll put you in my phone because down the road, maybe we'll cross paths again or, or there's something that we can do together. And, and I'm, uh, that's, that's my, uh, I live by that. You know, we go to Federation of Canadian Municipalities and I'll make as I'll many contacts. see you in Calgary next year. <laughs> yes, I'll make as many contacts as I can. Uh, I don't believe we should all sit, our council should all sit together for lunch. I think we should all be at separate tables and finding out who we're sitting with. You know, what do they do? You know, is there a chance that, that we can do some work together? That's important. And uh, so... Uh, I, I don't party bash, you know. I mean, in the in the seat that I'm in, uh, well, because I, I work with everybody. Have to. Around the table, you don't care if they're conservative, liberal, mm -hmm. NDP, Green, Block, People's Party, Keystone Party, whatever party. <clears throat> Not at all. Because at the end of the day, you're Selkirk party, yes. and yeah. that's the big thing. But we talk about the federal and provincial part of the job. Yeah. There needs to be buy-in from the community as well. And it seems like there is buy-in from the community. What do you attribute that to? Because pride in community is one thing, but getting people on side of what council is doing and where they're heading is a completely different scenario. For you as mayor, why do you think so many residents and the residents of your community are so comfortable with the advancements that Selkirk is making and the changes that they're making to make the city bigger and better well i think the older residents and um and, and people that i mean i went to school with uh, uh, you know and uh grew up with and, and worked with and, and whatnot uh, they're seeing the advances that we're making and and their advances that they agree with uh, that they like to see um, so they're proud of it, you know, and I and I think that that speaks volumes when they're in the coffee shops and the and the barber shops and at the hockey arena and golf courses and that. So when they talk about what's going on in Selkirk, it seems to be more positive, a lot more positive than than negativity, and and that just sort of uh, it, it's it's contagious, like it, it, it radiates. You know, somebody might not have seen something that you know the other person has seen, and they'll mention it, and they'll go and look at it, and they'll say, "Yeah, wow, that that is that is something that that I can live with," and and I'm glad I'm here. The newcomers that are coming are the ones that hear word of mouth or or they see something about us online uh you know I, I, i'm a i'm a media hound and, <laughs> and you know a lot of times ctv will will phone me and they'll they'll do something on the policing or costs or whatever and they'll come to larry because they know i'll, I'll accommodate you'll get a good sound I'll, better I'll, I'll, yeah, exactly and so people will come here and they say you know i've seen you on tv you're the guy on tv you know well those kind of things are important because people want to relate to their to, to the leadership to the councils and they want to be able to relate to Dwayne our CIO has been here all his life so they can relate to him they see him on the street they can say hello and and he's the type of person that he can listen to a comment from a resident so it's those kind of things that that make a community I want to be known as the community with big city amenities but retaining that small town feel so you want that to be known for Selkirk what do you want to be known for? As mayor of the city of Kel uh, Selkirk, what are you hoping your legacy is? Because you've been in this for five terms. I'm assuming you, you could run for another term. You could run for four more terms if you wanted to. Um, but looking back on your time in office so far, what do you hope people will take away from your time in office? Well, it's almost everything that we've done. Uh, I, I feel... You know, I'm honored. Like, <laughs> I wake up in the morning and, you know, I look up and to Celia and I say, thank you. You know, thanks for another day and jump out of bed. And I can't wait to get at things. So uh, just the change, people enjoying the change, people commenting on the change. And it's a change for, uh, you know, for the good. Uh, that's the legacy that, that I want to leave behind. Uh, the kids. 
the grandkids, you know, knowing that I was in this chair for as long as I, I have been. I don't think I'll be remembered for 43 years at Canada Safeway, but you know what, for five, six terms here at City Hall, I think I will be remembered, and uh, that's all I can hope for, and, and I'm happy with that. I want to talk about the tourism of your community because uh, I will be the first to admit this is the first time sitting in the city of Selkirk, first time visiting the city of Selkirk. I had heard about it, but it was yeah. never a spot on the map that I'd ever say, I want to go to Selkirk. How do you change that? But what are some of the tourism aspects of this great community that people need to go off the beaten track if they're on the Trans-Canada and go up 30 minutes from Winnipeg and stop in Selkirk? Well, absolutely. And, and we have, you know, our, our tourism arm has the right people in place now. So, I mean, they're, they're promoting us in, in a really a, a good way. Um, we're stealing from Winnipeg, a bit, <laughs> you know, like yeah, we're, we're trying to, I work with the all the mayors, Brian Bowman. And I was going to say, well, Scott Gillum might Close, not be happy. You know, <laughs> but stealing? you know what, they, <clears throat> they know me and they know my personality and, and they know I want to be a team player, with, but my but in my heart and, and you know, I'm worried about soccer, right? I mean, I want soccer to be on the map and you're right, I want people to come here, the tourism aspect. And I think we've seen that when, when you and I toured the Selkirk Park. And, and I think you were surprised at how much we have yeah. in that park. You know, we've got a fair and rodeo that, that can be in that park. We've got one of the biggest outdoor pools in Manitoba in that park. Beautiful skateboard, full RV park boat launching facilities and that's just one of our parks and we have many parks like that so i think we have to get it out there that we're a hidden gem and, and promote ourselves we all have to promote the citizens have to promote selkirk council has to promote selkirk uh, administration has to promote selkirk because just from touring selkirk park you're going to take away Wow, you, you know, th that, they've got a heck of a nice park there. Our fireworks display is, is one of the best in Manitoba. Well, it didn't start out that way, but we built it to that. And we didn't start out having thousands come here to see it, but now we're there. So we continually have to promote and we continually have to improve. And I think that's the way we'll get to tourism. What, what makes Selkirk special for you? What makes Selkirk's, what tourism spot in Selkirk makes it feel like home to you? Because you don't stay in this community for so long without it having something special. And there's always a charm about small town living and small city living that you don't get in larger urban centers. I'm not saying that's the bad because I live in Calgary, so yeah. I can't really say that, but I've lived in smaller communities and there's always a charm. Yeah. For you, what is the charm of Selkirk? Diversification is a big one for, for me, uh, and especially now, we're seeing more and more of the Indigenous population uh, moving here. We're surrounded by Indigenous, and uh, we're their region also, uh, but they're buying land in Selkirk, they're building in Selkirk, um, we're, we're well over 30% Indigenous now, and also the Indian population. Uh, a lot of our new developments, they're building the homes, uh, they're selling the homes, and, and the, the Indians are buying the homes, and when I say Indian, I mean the East Indians, but uh, I've talked to them. I've walked their communities, I've knocked on their doors, I've seen them outside, and I've talked to them, because it's important for a community to be welcoming, it's, a, it's an important aspect to have diversification in your community. Uh, it's part of the growth. Uh, the Ukrainian uh, immigrants, we, we have that here also, you know. Uh, we've been a melting pot, but we even that pot is getting bigger. And as mayor, I'm happy with that. I'm <laughs> proud of that. And that's the way we're going to grow, and we'll keep growing. Uh, we, we don't want to be a, a one-trick pony. We want We want to be something for everybody in this community. I, w I want to end on this question because we are almost at 40 minutes, if you can believe it. And I just looked at the clock. I think and I was we like, could talk all day. Oh, we could. You and I feel, I feel like we're going to have a few more conversations oh, at FCM in Calgary. Absolutely. But I want to end on this question. And it's, it, it's kind of encompassing what we've just talked about for the last 45 minutes. And give me the elevator pitch. Give me the elevator pitch of why Selkirk is such a great place to live, to work, and to raise a family. Well, when I first was elected, I had a white caravan with tinted windows and I went to General Signs and I got a decal on there that said Selkirk. Great place to live, great place to do business. That was the first day I was elected 17 years ago. I went and I got that on my van. So I wanted people to know that I'm, my heart is going to be in this. 
I, I want, I'm a, I have been here, born and bred here, all my life here, I'll die here. And I want people to know that, uh, that I'm in here for, for the long term. Uh, and I mean, pitching things, I'm a promoter, I'll, I pitch it everywhere I go. And I mean, it's the trail system here, the park system, the housing, the medical, uh, the variety of businesses. You know, I consider the medical number one business, you know, but the commercial, uh, the recycling industry here, the cannabis industry, it's all a part of what we're doing. Tourism. Tourism is big. I mean, we have fishing, you know, catfishing here. We're catfishing capital of the world. I'll challenge anybody that wants to come here and, and say they are, well, we'll have a, a catfish off. Uh, but those are the kind of things that, that will keep us growing. Um, it, it'll keep council as, as long as they want to run. I'm sure it'll keep them in the, in the seats because we've got some long-term councillors here. Uh, so, so come and see us. Uh, that, that's that's my pitch. Come and take a look at Salkard. Uh, it used to be we can't do it here. This was the the, the businessman might say we can't do that here. You're too close to Selkirk. Oh, to Selkirk, to Winnipeg. <laughs> pardon me. You're cl too close to Winnipeg. I changed that when I started here. You know, I said we have six hundred thousand to draw from, so we can do it here. If you have that mindset in a in a small community in a smaller city or or a, a town. You can't do nothing but succeed. Larry, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to A, tour me around your com great community, but also do this. It was very much appreciative. I appreciate you here, Chris. I, I really do. And I appreciate your interest in our community. And, and I appreciate the chance to get our community out further beyond our borders, even, even uh, more so. So thank you for 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 doing this. Well, for any of the Manitoba mayors and councillors who are listening to this, do what Larry just said. Come on my show! <laughs> because for some reason, you guys won't talk to me! But thank you so much, Larry. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Cross-Border Interviews. Your continued interest in delving deep into the issues that shape our communities across Canada is both inspiring and essential. Now, as we wrap up, it is my hope that you've gained valuable insights into the intricate world of municipal politics. Now, if you found this dialogue as engaging as I did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, you're not just staying up to date with the latest conversations, but you're also playing a vital role in supporting our endeavor to bring you more meaningful content. Now, we couldn't embark on this journey without your support. Creating content that sheds light on the issues affecting municipalities requires both dedication and resources. Now, if you believe in our mission and want to help us to continue to grow, please consider visiting our support page conveniently linked in the show notes below or by visiting crossborderinterviews.ca. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, goes a long way in ensuring that we can keep delivering the kind of content you've come to expect from us. Now, once again, thank you for being part of the Cross Border Interviews community. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, stay talking.